This track started out by going due north from Richmond all the way up into northern Virginia. We started at Guilford Elementary. I'm David. I'm Frank. And I'm Alfonso. Yes! And we're here today at Guilford Elementary in the Piedmont region of Virginia. We've been hanging out with these really cool fourth graders on our way to Great Falls Park. So come on, Trekkers! After hanging out with the Gators of Guilford Elementary, we headed over to Great Falls National Park, which happens to be the border of Virginia and Maryland. I'm David. I'm Frank. And I'm Alfonso. And, and we're, we're Virginia, Virginia Trekkers. Trekkers. And we're here today at Great Falls Park, which is the fall line of the Potomac River. This is where the water goes from the Piedmont region to the Coastal Plain region. We're going to talk about the history of this place, or we may just sit here and look at the falls. But if you're ready to go trek it, let's, let's go! Right behind me is the fall line of the Potomac River. And the fall line happens when the river flows from the metamorphic rock of the Piedmont region down into the lower sedimentary rock of the coastal plains. And it digs through these rocks, um, forming these waterfalls that you see here. And all the Three of the four rivers of Virginia that you learn about have fall lines. We've shown you the fall line of the James River, the fall line of the Rappahannock River near Fredericksburg, and here's the fall line of the Potomac River. The York River is too short to have a fall line because it's only in the coastal plain region. To show you just how hard metamorphic rocks are, check out this picture we found at the park. It was taken in the 1920s, and the trekkers were able to still find each one of those falls in the picture during our visit. So you can just imagine how long those falls have been here and how long it takes for water to wear away that metamorphic rock. All right, so we moved down uh, the river just a little bit down here so you can see uh, uh, the whole falls. And uh, you'll notice here that we've got a fire rescue crew out here. They're practicing their life-saving maneuvers. Uh, and that's because an average of seven people die here a year. And as you can see, the water has cut straight cliffs into the metamorphic rock that Dave was talking about. And if you fall off or try to climb down to the river, you have no chance. You're going straight into the water. That water is cold and moving really quick. Check out the river rescue crew. Came across this really cool sign here and we took a second to figure out what it was. Because when we were over there by the river, we're a long way away from the water. I mean, good 40, 50 feet from the water. And then we find this sign. And it turns out that this is the high water marks uh, that have come, the water levels that have come down the Potomac. Now you may be saying, how does the water get that high? Well, the Potomac is part of the Potomac uh, watershed, and which is a bigger part of the Chesapeake Bay watershed. So the water that you see here is gonna end up in the Chesapeake Bay, and then up, end up in the Atlantic Ocean. But this water doesn't just start in the Potomac. When water falls down on land, the water trickles down into tributaries, small streams, into bigger creeks, bigger rivers, and then into the Potomac, and then into the Chesapeake. So water, the water that we're looking at today may be from West Virginia, Pennsylvania, Maryland, and Virginia. Pretty cool stuff. But it's also important to keep your land clean, because everything that you put in or put onto the land ends up in our water system eventually. And we don't want to pollute places like Great Falls National Park. So I found a nice place to sit, right here by the beautiful Potomac Falls. You know what, the Indians thought this was a nice place to meet also. The Powhatan Indians lived in this area, and the big, huge Powhatan Confederation the Chief Powhatan was in charge of, they sometimes had meetings here. And the Indians, this was a great place for them too because all their natural resources were here. They got water and transportation from the river, and they also got food from the land around here. Alright Trekkers, as you can see here, I've got my Trekker sweatshirt on because it's a little bit cool outside. It is the transition time between uh, summer and winter and that's called fall or autumn. And as you can see behind me here, we've got some fall color. That tree is not dying, even though the leaves may be changing color and eventually going brown, it is not dying. What it's doing is it's losing all its leaves because during the winter time it's too hard for it to grow. So it goes dormant and during its dormancy period, the roots uh, underneath the ground are the ones that are growing and uh, becoming uh, stronger and getting ready for spring and summer in which the top of the tree is going to do the growing. Beautiful time of year, fall in Virginia. 
All right, so behind me you see a hole in the rock there, and that hole was blasted out with dynamite and explosives. And the reason they blew a hole in there is boats needed to get up the Potomac. Obviously a boat can't get up those huge waterfalls that you saw earlier, so what they would do is they would blow the hole in a rock, and then this would turn into a channel, and they used a system of locks to raise and lower the river level to get boats uh, past and around the waterfalls. And to explain how a lock works, we're going to go catch up with Alfonso. Alright, boys and girls, the canal was very important because it served as a mode of transportation and trading of goods. And George Washington was a developer in bringing Maryland and Virginia together in order to have more trade. He believed this was important to, in bringing the states closer together. Now in order to do this here at the falls, we had to have what we call locks. And there were a series of five locks. This particular lock is the first lock. When a boat came on in, it would stop, the doors would close, which would raise the water up. And once the water was raised up, they would let the boat would escape from the end of the lock, and then it would travel down the canal a little ways, and it would get to a second lock. And it would go to the same process. The boat would raise, the boat would leave, the boat would eventually get to another lock, it would raise, it would leave, until it reached the very top where the boats could go down the canal delivering its goods. Extremely innovative, very smart way back then, and we still use this type of process now. You may be wondering how they water filled the locks in order to raise the boats on the Potomac. Well, it is actually very simple. The engineers use geography and gravity. Remember, water always runs downhill. The engineers cut the canal so that it forced the river to run downhill through the new channel. When the lock doors closed, it temporarily stopped the flow of water and filled up the lock. This would raise the boat to the new water level. Once the water level was equal, the boat could proceed further upstream. All right, Trekkers, we've come to the end of another great day. And look at the sights here at Great Falls National Park. It is an incredible view. It's one of the most beautiful places that the Trekkers have come to visit. If you ever get a chance to visit, we highly encourage it. And if you want to see more awesome places in Virginia, be sure to check out VirginiaTrekkers.com. Keep on trekking!